Good morning, everybody. Um, Angel Lee was going to give this talk, uh, but she had some uh, course to go to overseas, so she couldn't make it, unfortunately. So I had to I fill in at short notice. And I'll give um, an idea of MP's role with the management of invasive fish and the cohesion response process. Um, in this talk, I'll, I'll sort of cover two broad areas the biosecurity part, which is Angelie's area, and the uh, fisheries part, which is more in my line. Um, so that's the kind of areas um, I'll cover. In the biosecurity side, our roles and responsibilities uh, we have a remit, remit to respond to new to New Zealand organisms. These are organisms that arrived uh, before 1998 after 1988, sorry, and um, so if anything new in New Zealand, uh, we will take the lead agency in doing that. For uh, pests that are already established in New Zealand, uh, we would work under the Pest Management National Plan of Action, um, and that's um, we would take the lead role uh, if it's a more of a national kind of response required, <coughs> but if it's a uh, a range, um, a pet species that's a new range area that, that comes under the regional council. And it's certainly easier to manage pet species if they're in the um, pest management plans. Um, you're probably aware of the work we're doing on um, sea squirts and the um, and the, and the Asian um, um, there's some eradication areas in the, around the coast dealing with um, and area and those sort of things, uh, which comes down to our area and along with the regional council. Uh, biosecurity, we've got about probably four main stages of defence. There's a pre-border. If you want to import any animal or plant or any part of any <coughs> animal or plant, you need to have an import health standard. Uh, at the border, when you go to control Z, you will be familiar with these when you come through the airport, arriving back, arriving back to New Zealand. Um, then post-order, uh, this is probably where a lot of our work is involved, uh, managing the exotic pest and disease hotline, surveillance and dealing with um, <coughs> cursion investigations and response. And then if the species has become established, we would uh, work under the uh, long-term incursion management uh, role. <coughs> And port health standards, um, probably the most familiar one, people would be, most relevant one to this talk would be the um, one we did for um, ornamental fish. Uh, Natasha um, mentioned that before. Um, this ornamental health standard outlines what you need to do for quarantine facilities and lists the species that can be imported and what are prohibited. And, um, it covers marine freshwater and invertebrates. Our challenges are often is non-compliance with the import health standards, difficult key getting good quarantine facilities, uh, and difficult getting inspectors trained up to uh, recognise signs of risk species, and testing enough fish for established freedom of disease. Now we operate the um, exotic. Uh, pest and disease hotline, uh, it's the 0800 number. I've got some stickers here if um, people want to grab one later on. Um, it's not like a 111 call, you know, it's probably your first port of call if you find something unusual, or any disease fish, or any massive die off of fish or plants. <coughs> that would be the number you, you should call pretty early on. So the way that works, um, people call the 0800 number, uh, the details are taken, and then there may be something that's normal, and we may probably take no, a no action. Uh, but the uh, incursion investigator might look at it and say, okay, this is um, something we can deal with on a small scale, and they'll make visit the site and, if possible, mitigate the risks or whatever. Uh, if it's more serious, then uh, a response will be initiated and that will be managed either by the animals team in MPI <coughs> or the plants team. A uh, number of challenges there. Uh, people often don't trust government. 
news are often the last ones to hear about a um, disease outbreak. Uh, when you collect samples, uh, often they're not in good condition, so if you do find any diseased fish or anything unusual, try and get the best samples you can uh, and send them off to MPI. And of course, sometimes the legislation is not clear on who, who governs the best fish, etc. Uh, response process um, if an organism becomes established or is a, look, uh, present in New Zealand and is considered to be a risk in the country, an incursion investigator will visit the site and uh, develop a risk rapid assessment report. This is done over probably a day or two. And that would list all the information known about that species, how it colour and all that sort of thing. Then we would develop a response team who would assess what the government will do and whether we're to respond or not. And if a response is initiated, then incursion investigators will be involved in a technical capacity and we'll probably contract other technical experts on to be able to deal with the, um, with the incursion. And then uh, we would, the response team would decide on a plan of action either to eradicate or control. Challenges are sometimes a lack of tools to respond uh, and often there's different drivers for a response based on political or environmental damage. Now if an organism is, becomes established in New Zealand, uh, something like uh, Didymo for instance, we're not being able to eradicate or eliminate it then we go into some sort of long-term management program. And this program involves other agencies, Department of Conservation, Regional Council, the Fish and Game, in trying to manage or control and, or contain that organism to where, where it exists. On the fisheries management side, um, we're manage responsible for managing New Zealand fisheries and uh, we're sort of issuing fishing permits and special permits. Uh, we have a role in permissions and transfer of aquatic life in conjunction with DOC and, and Fish and Game. And we manage land-based fish farms. Um, these can be perch or goldfish and other pest fish can be incidental species on a fish farm. So we've got to manage those, those species. The Fisheries Act, uh, if you want to take anything from the wild, you need to be required you need some sort of authority under the Fisheries Act unless it's an exempted uh, activity. That would be things like um, your own, uh, taking fish for your personal use, uh, customer use, uh, white bait exempted and those sort of things. And also unwanted aquatic life is exempted from the Fisheries Act. If you want to take them for commercial purposes, you need to have a fishing permit. Um, but for other purposes, you need to have a special permit. Um, and so in the freshwater area, there's three acts that sort of are involved in, in uh, managing a freshwater species. You'll see the unwanted aquatic life is outside the fisheries act area. Um, and, and white bait and unwanted aquatic life, a uh, white bait and sports fish are excluded from the fisheries act as well. Now, although koi is an unwanted uh, as classes unwanted aquatic life. Um, to take koi, you may need a special permit uh, if you're going to be using illegal methods, if you're going to be using uh, electric fishing machines or um, trammel nets or something that's not normally permitted, uh, or if you're likely to catch a reasonable amount of bycatch. Uh, for other pest fish, you can get a special permit under research purposes or similar purposes. Uh, or if it is for commercial purpose, um, a fishing permit can be obtained. Transfer and release of freshwater aquatic life, um, pretty rare for uh, invasive fish. Um, we normally issue them for natives, moving native species around or grass and silver carp for uh, weed and algae control. Occasionally we'll issue uh, uh, permits to transfer pest fish between islands if they're moving, say, Gambusia to a research facility down south or something like that. Fish farming, uh, we manage land-based fish farms. 
um, you try and mitigate the risk of um, pest species being moved with farm fish or with the transfer and release of aquatic life. Uh, we sort of make, try and make sure that the, any fish being moved from a fish farm is free of disease. And um, we try and mitigate accidental or illegal releases from a fish farm. Not always a possible one, fortunately. Issues and gaps. Um, we can't restrict special permit numbers. It's not based on a, um, quantities. Um, it's just based on whether you're, what the environmental effect <coughs> of your activity. So we can't contain the number of permits. Often market driven rather than for control eradication. Uh, we quite often get non compliance. We've had a few people prosecuted for um, reaching their permits or fishing permits. Um, we have a few issues with selling fish to licensed fish receivers. Well, it's not, not under a fishing permit, so it's difficult to sell to a fish receiver. And of course, transfer organisms with, with farmed fish. So in summary, uh, pest fish are managed both in pre and post border space. We have a remit uh, for dealing with new invasive species and then redirect for other agencies for, for established fish. Fishing permits, special permits may be required to take invasive fish from the wild. 